your striker pose. So I think, I think. Oh, oh, taking a bit of time today. Well, please don't get me string singing. Is that what you want to do some singing? Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, we're live, we're live, we're live, we're live. Good morning, love sales, hate selling members. Um, Hillary, before we go live, before we actually start anything, can we do a pose, please, just for the um Facebook thumbnail? So after three, one, two, three. <laughs> Superb. Guys, I'm joined today by the wonderful Hillary Sims of Life Balance Counseling. So chuffed to get um, Hillary on today for an interview. Um, I'm sure she said no the first time I asked her, but after a few few weeks of cajoling and, and soft words, she eventually gave in. So I'm really, really glad to have you here, Hillary. Thank you very, very much. Uh, great welcome. to have you here. So I, I know you're pushed for time. I know you're a very, very busy lady. So hey, let's dive straight in. So Hilary, please tell um, the members, what do you do for a business? I'm a self-employed counsellor based in Stourbridge in the West Midlands. Mm -hmm. I help people live their life in a more fulfilling way. Oh, they excellent. Come to me with their issues. We explore what's causing their issues. And then we work with ways of helping them do things differently. Oh, excellent. Um, they walk into my room feeling timid, shy, concerned about things. But after a few sessions together, we uh, they go out of here feeling more confident, more able to deal with things. So you um, offer a transformational solution? Oh, yeah, I certainly um, do. Oh, yeah, that's, that's brilliant. That's really good. And, and, and what um, what was your inspiration to, to get into counselling? What was your kind of why? What was the why? why? Um, my husband was in the army. Did a full awesome. career in the army. So I'd moved around uh, Hampshire, Wiltshire, lived in Germany for a period of time. I so, didn't know that. You never told me that. <laughs> I told you you'd find out a bit more today. Okay. Well, my daughter was actually born when we lived in Germany. Uh, so when we moved back here, it was my time to do something for me. I'd always worked in an office, always worked in accounts or customer services and followed him round and done whatever jobs I could find with the army. So when he came out of the army, I went back to college and I found this college course and thought, oh, I like that. Let's yeah. give it a go and see what happens. So three years of training and I've now been working for myself for six years. Why, why, um, why, why counselling is a matter of interest? It, just the content of the course attracted me to, to the, it in the first place. And I always seem to be the one in the group that, people who come and talk to have you got time to talk or people who ring or poor probably I was the one also that picked up on how people were feeling okay and okay. might not say how they're feeling but I could sense there wasn't quite something so I might be the one that picked the phone up or just say are you okay oh, and wow. then they just start to talk that, that's amazing. I think um, to a degree, I mean, I kind of put that down to um, spirituality, almost like psychic psychic ability to be able to get in touch with someone's feelings. That's really powerful. Um, and I know a few people who have got that same skill where they can sense the mood of the room without, like you say, having to actually say anything. Um, that, that's brilliant. Um, so Quite often with clients, you can see they're wanting to say something what they first come into the room with is not necessarily the underlying issue. Ah. And sometimes you can see with their body language, their mouth saying one thing, but their eyes or their head are sort of saying something else. Oh, so, so never lie to you, Hilary, because you'll always know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you can, you can see that, and it's about building that relationship with the client. So they actually feel comfortable to say, yeah, and I feel like this, or I've had this traumatic event, or I'm worried about this. I would probably say a good 90% of the time, the thing they ring you up and say, this is what I'm suffering with, is not the real issue. There's something underlying. But sometimes you've just got to pick up on it that, yeah. hey, they, they want to tell me something, but they're not quite. And they're not quite, some, yeah. yeah. And sometimes even just saying, I'm sensing there's something else you want to tell me. Yeah. It, it's quite direct. Yeah. But it's challenging. But sometimes that just... Oh yeah, I can tell her now. She's she's realised this something. That, 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 that's a sales me. technique. That's so good because um, yeah, you're prompting that 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 you're digging without having to dig. Um, yeah. I'm sensing. Do you hear these therapists in the group or counsellors in the group? Wonderful technique there that Hillary has just let us let us into. I'm sensing there's something else you want to tell me, guys. That is a real pearl. 
um, most certainly, you know, if you do work with people, I'm sure Hilary won't mind you um, using that. Just send her commission to, um, mm -hmm. yeah, we'll have you address that here on there. <laughs> so um, tell us about some of the challenges that you've had. What are some of the challenges that you've had to overcome? Well, setting up the business in the first place, realising what am I going to do now I've got the qualification. Yeah. You start to look around for employed work and realise people want counsellors for free. Yep. <laughs> people want you to volunteer which is great mm -hmm. but when you've paid for three years worth of training and all your memberships of the societies and the governing bodies you need to be members of and your insurance yeah you need to get some money back yes of course. so having looked around realizing there's not a lot of paid work yeah and um, that was the thing to set up private practice so i carried on working in my account job that i was doing and ran it along the side for a little while and then just decided I'm going to take the plunge but working out where to advertise what do I need to run a business who you know who to where to go who do yeah. I need to be registered with where do I need to advertise yeah learning to market which Nigel has supported me for the last couple of months learning to market oh what an inspiration he is oh, and you. Well, you are and it's certainly where he's taught me about blogging and writing content it's made me see the things that I do in a different way. Brilliant, brilliant. And that's the main thing. That's why I, I do what I do is because, um, you know, there are ways of doing things to get a result. And I think once you understand the reasons why you're doing these things, and then you look at the result and it's like, oh, that's because of me. It's, what a feeling. It's beautiful. It's like, oh. It just yeah. shows that the time that you're putting into your marketing is paying off. Um, yeah. and, that, and that's the main thing. Any, any other challenges? I mean, you've got well, quite a few there. <laughs> COVID, obviously. Ah. Most of my work up until March the 18th, was it? Yeah. Was um, face to face. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, no, we're not allowed to see people, but yeah. these people still need support. Of course. So learning to do it by a Zoom, yeah. by a telephone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that, that was a real challenge because yeah. obviously a lot of our work, as I say, is being able to see what people are. Body feeling, language and, their body yeah, language yeah, absolutely so contracting over the telephone and it seems easier because you do see people but contracting over the telephone is a little bit more difficult of course but i have continued to support people i have continued to support the young people at the school where i work brilliant through that through this time which has been i know it's been challenging for the for the pupils but yeah i think that's probably the biggest challenge in six years learning how to do it online learning how to do it differently Brilliant. Well, the good thing about you learning how to do it online now, and I think I said this to you, your, your customers don't all live in Stavage. Okay? Your yeah. customers are all over the world. Um, and if you can help as many people as you can um, by making sure that you have a va you know, availability and online is perfect, it means that your door can never be shut to anybody who really needs you. So well done to you. Well done for embracing it. It's, you know, it has been a scary time for a lot of people. Mm. Um, but you're an action taker, so I know what you're all about. <laughs> and I think, <laughs> and now I'm going to start offering face to face again. Yeah, yeah. So I'm now, to, but I'm now to move. This is my counselling room. You can see behind me, which is only small. Is that a kitchen? No, it's not a kitchen. <laughs> so it's an office, but it's only small. So we're going to decamp to the garage. Oh, wow, right, brilliant! So I can still do two meters space. I can do two meters in the garage. So we're yeah. actually going to decamp to the garage. Yeah. It means they haven't got to come in the house at all. It is private. I've done all. I've done all the sound tests with the telly on and everything. Can you <laughs> can you hear through them? Because our garage is sort of between our house and next doors. Right. Are next doors. So I've done the, I've done the sound tests and everything to make sure it's a confidential space, gotcha. which is obviously the most important. Exactly. Yeah. Which it is. So yeah. So I've got my first face to face client tomorrow. Boom! It, it is an old. It is a client I've worked with before, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's a little you're bit. Them, you're bringing them to a new environment, so it's almost like yeah. a new experience for you both. Yeah, oh, well, good stuff. Quite, quite daunting, really. Thinking, and you, you have the face mask conversation. Ah. Do you want me to wear a face mask, or do you want me to wear a face mask? How do you feel about it? I, I feel that it's difficult talking with face masks on. Perhaps we should try it, Nigel, and see how it works. Yeah, I think um, I, in terms of for peace of mind, I probably yeah. would maybe start the discussion with it. Yeah. Um, and just see how, how it goes. Um, yeah. Some people will have a, an immense fear of speaking to somebody without having a mask on. Yeah. Do you think COVID would have caused so many mental health issues 
yeah. um, because of the fear around it and the, everyone's wearing masks and this, that and the other. So um, I'd probably start with it and then just make sure the client's comfortable. And if they aren't, they say, I'll tell you what, then after three, we'll take them both off and see what happens. It's, <laughs> it's a bit like the naughty school child, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, we're allowed to do this. Have well, we got I, permission to yeah. do this? But I think you wearing the mask to begin with kind of gives them peace of mind that you've done everything that needs to be done, that needs yeah. to be done for safety, et cetera, et cetera. So excellent. So um, what advice would you give somebody who was daft enough in 2020 <laughs> to start a business right now? Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you I don't mean that. Certainly wouldn't say that because I do know I do know there are people online that you see that have started it or yes. I just started just before COVID and yep. are still gone with it. Brilliant. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Okay. I think that's a I think that's a big one. I think we all we know our industry, yeah. Yep. But we don't necessarily know what we need to step out there and improve the service that we already offer. Yeah. Um, research your target market where yeah. are they are they actually out are they actually out there at all yeah um but i think for me ask for help yeah you know you know what you can sell you know what you can do but people can teach you how to sell it better where to advertise it better yeah um where are where are that target market yeah. Yeah. yeah you know but i think and i think there is lots of people out there on Facebook, on Twitter, on LinkedIn and stuff that, that can support you, that aren't going to cost you an arm and a leg as well. Absolutely. I mean, I've got a saying, um, I need to have somebody else, but the answers are all around you. Yeah. You just need to know where to look. You know, anything that's being done right now in terms of marketing, sales, everything, it's all, it's all online. You know, this isn't you know, pre-internet where you had to go to the library to learn or you had to go and ask somebody and they say, no, I'm not telling you. Mm. You can find out anything that you want to know about anything. Um, for some people, just doing that searching is the difficult part because they don't know where to begin. Yeah. Um, but absolutely, ask for help. I ask for help. Um, oh, well, on one of the groups on Facebook, somebody's asked about um, publishing posts on social media this morning. Right. They're struggling yeah. with that. Yeah. So I've taken a little bit of your learning and I've mentioned Buffer. Go, Hillary. <laughs> hey, I'll tell well, you what. Know. You can be one of my my sales trainers going. <laughs> there's a couple. There's a couple of my um, clients like you. Like they know more than me now. It's like oh, I've told them too much. I certainly no, don't know more than you. Uh, no, you know the, the nice thing about that though is because you now have the confidence to share um, what you know works for you. Um, you you've raised your own level. Yeah. You know, you're able to t start conversations with people about things which before you you'd be like them. Whereas now it's like, well, look, this is what I do. This is the result I get. This is the tools yeah. I use. And that's brilliant. That's empowerment. That means that you're able to help people in even more ways than just giving them the counselling service. So but for me, it's like, it's a win-win. But I also felt confident to say, if she asked me how it worked or whatever, yes, yeah. I could actually do it. But the, yeah. the other thing as well is, if you come up with an idea to do it, even yeah. if somebody else is doing it, go yeah. out there and give it a go. Give it a go. We all will do it differently competition is beautiful you know why competition is beautiful i'll give you an example if you was the only counselor in the world and nobody else did counseling do you think counseling would be something that people wanted to do no exactly so the fact that there are other businesses doing what you do says that there's a market for what you yeah. do and like you say you'll do it your way they'll do it their way never be afraid of competition competition can be used to um make yourself better it can be used to um emulate position yourself against to say well, okay how can i make what i offer better more dynamic more exciting um you know there's loads of people out there who do what i do uh, but not all like me thank god <laughs> the world can only cope with one nigel campbell um i think yeah. we all agree with that yeah i think my wife <laughs> well, as well actually i don't know why um okay uh, is there anything that anyone you know the members in the group can help you with right now collaboration if anybody thinks that I could work with them or their business would be enhanced by having um, the arm of a counsellor on board. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. or anybody that thinks that I could work with them. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think. Are, are there any specific business types that you know um, segue very well with yourself? Well, um, beauty treatment for a start. Okay. If you're having beauty treatment. Right. Because there underlying issues for wanting that are we like talking about things like cosmetic surgery and yeah oh, right okay because yeah. yeah i've never considered that because they do say um 
that some talk, I think they mentioned a couple of years ago that what the government were concerned that people were having the um, treatments, but they weren't being kind of assessed um, in terms of mental health to find that, well, like you say, the whys, why do you feel you need to do this and so on. So that's, that's actually a great idea. And how many, um, how many companies have you contacted to say that you uh, could help them out with that? That's on, that's on my to-do list. That <laughs> Excellent. I, well, I have had, I did have a company approach me about it, which was yeah, great. Yeah. And that was just before COVID. So hopefully that'll all pick up again afterwards yeah. when everything can happen again. Yeah. But then well, they've yeah. realised people go to cosmetic surgery or treatments, probably to hide something, probably to change something. They could yeah. have been divorced and want to change something. or yeah. But they've realised that it's not always necessarily where they really want to be. There's other underlying issues. Un un underlying issues. Absolutely. And, um, you know, if you've had um, that type of business approach you, that means that there'll be other businesses of the same type who will need you as well. So I always say start with one and then go and get the other 10, 15, 20. Um, that could be your niche market. Yeah. You know, just focusing on people who are going for... Yeah. Because you know, it's about control. being happy with you as you are. Yes. You know, we're yeah. all unique. We're all different. We've we've all got lumps, bumps, and things that we'd like to change. Oh. You know. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, absolutely. But, we've all, yeah, but, absolutely. But it's learning to love you as you are. Yeah. And if you learn to love you as you are, it won't matter. It won't matter what other people think. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely a, a, a mantra that I definitely uh, adhere to. It's like love yourself first. If you can't yeah. love yourself, then how can you expect others to love you? You can't. Um, but there's so much in social media now that you must be this, you must be that, you must have these lips, you must have these eyebrows or whatever. Yep. And, you know, <laughs> you must look like this person. And if you're not like this person, you're not good enough. And, yeah. And yeah. sadly, particularly for young people, yes. that is yeah. so much pressure. Yeah. That I've yeah. got to look like this or I've got to have this or I've got to do this. It's, it's scary. It's, it's scary, really. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking back to when I was a kid and I think there was like the kind of fashion police who like if you didn't have a certain pair of trousers or a certain pair of trainers that you were seen as like a lower class person. I think I was yeah. called co coffee once. Coffee. You're a, you're a coffee because you haven't got fabric trousers. I didn't even know what a coffee was. Um, I did manage to get a pair of fabrics, which were hand-me-downs. Uh, but not until I was about 15. And then that same person went, oh, you're, you're trendy now because you've got farrows. And I was like, your opinion, your, your opinion doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's scary. And if I was like a, a weaker-willed person, that could have like really impacted me because the person I would have blamed would have been my parents. Because, oh, yeah. Why have we got enough money to buy me a pair of farrows? And I think farrows at the time were like £40 for a pair. £40 for a pair of trousers in the 90s. Good, or 80s actually. Uh, whoa, I don't think so. Um, I'm looking to get a pair of £2 trainers. But, um... <laughs> but that's the pressure now that young people are on. Yes. They're on social media 24-7. Yeah. They see yeah. it. They see footballers with tens of thousands of pounds a week. Yeah. They see this person, that all these YouTubers yeah. got this, got that. Most of that they'll have been given for free, but because they're YouTubes. But it, for young people, I've got to have this, I've got to do this. My friend puts all these photos on facebook all the time they've got a better life than me do you really have a better life if you've got to be posting photos of everything you eat and everything you go to and everything all the time i think that is someone saying i want some attention please talk to me <laughs> got to buy the pouty face and how many likes i get yep I yeah, did try yeah. that pouty face once, and uh, my friend said I looked ridiculous. But hey, that's another story. Obviously, didn't obviously didn't get many likes then on that post. <laughs> no, right? Who's joined us? So, uh, hey, Jen, how you doing? Oh, everyone's calling me Mr. Nigel now because of my um <laughs> my video I did the other week. I love it, Mr. Nigel. Um, hi, Jen Styles. I'll be seeing you shortly, darling. I'll be bringing your microphone over to you, Lisa Ty. Hope you're well, hun. Uh, hey, Melissa. I hope you're good. Um, Ernie says, I think online will be more and more important going forward for your type of business. I think he's absolutely spot on. Yeah, um, the world has changed. I mean, even myself, I'm not in a rush to go anywhere where there's people, if I'm honest. Um, yeah. And, you know, I know, the, and, you know, anything can happen to you at any time, but it's that kind of thing as well. If I can reduce the odds, <laughs> then. I'm in a good place. I've got family. I've got family, but I wouldn't want to pass anything on to. So my mindset is really about kind of avoiding people. Keep, so, keep yourself safe and keep mm, those around you safe. So uh, early box all, spot on, mate. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> Jen Starr says, I remember the word coffee. <laughs> I've never heard that word before. Is that I a think, black word? I think it was a shortened version of scruffy. Oh, okay. That's what I think, because you're a coffee, you're scruffy. Okay. Yeah, I think there's a bit of a correlation there. Thanks, Jen. Um, I'm, I'm glad someone remembers it. Uh, hi, Mike Leyland. Hope you're well, mate. I'll be calling you later, Mike. I want to speak to you about several things. Hey, Gila. Hope you're good. Um, oh, I think I've got oh, Melissa again. Um, so, yeah, thanks, guys. Thank you for joining in. Um, Hillary, is there anything that you want to add before we uh, close the door? Don't think so. Just if any, as I say, if anybody wants to speak to me about co collaboration or anybody needs a little bit of support or anything, yeah. give me a call. Please, Hilary, put all your links in the comments, um, Facebook uh, page, website, LinkedIn, all of it, every single thing. Anybody wants to then go and find out more about you can click into that and just go check you out. Um, in terms of collaboration, yeah, absolutely. Stay on that one. I think that's a really, really um, powerful way of getting some high value um, clients in. Because someone going for cosmetic surgery isn't looking to then spend ten pounds. They're looking to kind of, um, you know, really make a change. So that the, the, their budget will allow them to kind of include you in that. And um, yeah, keep keep being an action taker. Uh, and thank you so much. Thanks guys for joining in. Uh, this video will go on to YouTube um, soon. And um, yeah, I'm always looking for business owners. If anybody else is interested in having a Facebook Live interview with moi, then I. Um, I'm booking for August now. Um, so, get, you know, come at me and we'll get some dates together and uh, get things rolling. Uh, what I'm going to do, Hilary, I'm going to take your, what you've just put in chat. No, I'll take the number off it. Oh, take your number off, yeah? No, I need a five on the end of the number. Oh, you need to add, yeah, you need to add the number to it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let me just put that on here now. I certainly can. Paste. So it's um, I had a bit of your problem. My fingers went, but my brain wasn't with my fingers. <laughs> so it's four four seven five eight five. Yeah. Excellent. Email, website. Yeah, excellent. And then um, I'll drop your your Facebook in the comments as well, guys. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I'm going to put all the details on. Hi, Chanel. I'm going to put all the details on so you can um, go and check out Hillary yourself. And uh, I look forward to catching up with you. There's not one. We haven't got a, a Facebook Live on Thursdays. I'm going to be in Zoe Bennett's Queen's Masterclass, although I'm a king. Um, so um, next week we'll be joined by the wonderful, I believe it's Melissa and Rogers. So um, I'll be looking, putting the event up for that. But guys, thanks so much for joining us today. Hillary, don't go anywhere. I'm going to pause this now. Guys, speak to you soon. Have a wonderful day and catch up with you all later. Toodle pip. Bye. Say bye, Hillary. Bye. Thanks a lot for listening. <laughs> okay, guys. Bye.